sorry to have made this huge long video, but to try and think of all the things we've gone through. Well guys, here we are again, new campsite for the next week. Excuse the flushed appearance in my red eyes. We've been driving for seven hours and in there, as you might know, it's quite a workout. So what we need to do now is set up our camp. And here today we have our trusty little Oz tent. It's an RV3 light. So trying to get out the sun. It's 30 seconds apparently. And we also have our complete modular panel set. I'm just crib noting here. And we're gonna put up the whole thing and see how fast or how efficiently it goes and give you a quick walk around about what we like and what is maybe has a bit of room for improvement. So here we go. Should we put the timer on it? Here we go. So this has been folded in, that is the direction you're going to go. When you fold it flat, open it to the one side. Should be 30 seconds according to the manual right mm -hmm. you tell me how long that took but we're not done you could get in there and sleep i guess but if there's a hurricane if it's raining you need to do a little bit extra work and the whole front piece comes out as well let's have a look at that Yeah. First we need to peg down the back of the tent. What they do give you for your money is some really seriously sturdy pegs and a lot of them. Also these ropes, very good, very thick. Genius. Easy to use. These little clip things, that's very good. They don't tangle very uh, easily. If they do, they come apart a lot easier than the little thin ropes you get on a quetcher, right? So we need about six pegs at the back, which is a lot. This is unique to the RV light. It's only the RV3 that comes in a light, as far as I know. This is for this little boy here. This included the uh, default now, huh? The net on. This is part of the tent. Comes with the RV3 light. These two poles. What it means is you need to take out
fun weekend. Look on the car. It's assuming you're not going anywhere in the next week. Just remember to unhook it if you're going to leave. So what that does here, if you look in here, raises the fly sheet up off the back of the tent, gives you a bit more cooling, and if it rains. We have camped once in, uh, in the rain without this, and the tent leaked. <laughs> but with this, it stays nice and dry. So the front awning. This is a ridge pole which actually belongs to the modular set but we added it into this bag because it's a lot more handy. Let's give it a rough width. It's a lot more handy to have it on the front poles. Front poles too, give it a rough height. Why? Because we adjust it later. I'm going to try and do this on my own. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. Because that's what you do when you go camping. You all have your tasks. Someone's busy cooking, doing the other stuff, grabbing all the other chairs and yeah. furniture. Get, getting all the bedding and stuff. And then someone's got the tent, right? Normally, one person does the tent. Yeah. I don't know how you guys camp. Some tents are quite fun to watch <laughs> when they pitch them. But a quetcher tent, normally, the quick throw ones is two seconds. You just throw it in the air and it's done. Yes, yeah, the folding up part that's really funny. <laughs> so here we have a situation. What we can do is peg it down temporarily. Now that's up. There's a bit of maneuvering. We can get this out. And this in. Good guesstimate. There's a little Velcro here. So that's pretty straight now. Now we come over to the modular set. Mm -hmm. This is a lot more fiddly. This is not 30 seconds. Do you need it? We do. Got our bedroom in there. This is our workspace. That's what happens when you're a digital nomad, you need a space to work. <laughs> You've got to make money somehow. Yep. Keep the wheels rolling. Yep. Gotta keep rolling. <laughs> so here, same deal. Just put up the poles temporarily, likewise. You can, like, you can put the sides up first and then the poles, or you put the poles up first and then the sides. Nice and tight. That's pretty cool. So it gives you a lot of headroom, yeah. which is nice. Then we have these boys. And luckily, they've numbered them. A is A over there. And how you do this? Oh, 
I really like him because he's got a black skirting that I know goes at the bottom. <laughs> Pardon? The black skirting goes at the bottom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the netting is on the inside. <laughs> so on the roof here we have our zipper. Um, what's this? Carrier. Yeah. This is stick that in there from the front. And yeah, I need to drop that pole when I'm doing it because I just don't have that extra height. Seems to be like a plastic uh, zipper, very coarse one. What you can do is velcro your pole into this just so it keeps it a little bit aligned. And then the last piece is the front. What happens on all the corners is it has a velcro strip as well as the tape. And this is good for the rain. Look yes, at the we, corners. We tested it well. <laughs> and here we have our zipper again. And this one goes from the top to the bottom. So that's that. How are you going to get in? Now we're stuck outside. So <laughs> the tent's nice and dry. We're going to sleep outside. <laughs> it's really handy that there are doors on either side. It's and in pretty the front. fine stuff. Very fine uh, mesh. Obviously our poles are not high enough yet. What I do here, take this strap, which is normally pegged into the ground, I assume because the instructions are not very well documented. Put that on there. This one. And this one. Now you can adjust your pole to the required tension. And suddenly mm. it becomes quite tight. It's tight. Here. So that's pretty taut, pretty tight, a lot of headroom. A lot of space, this is 240 wide, 2 meters long, same as the tent, 2 meters deep, 240 wide. This is 190, I can just stand in here, which is cool, getting dressed or whatever. You have two windows, only open from the inside, this mesh is permanent, which is cool. A little pocket for your stuff which you can move around. As you saw the um, Velcro here is to stop this from clicking in, otherwise you might just collapse. <laughs> There's two ventilations on top, over here, which we just leave open. Obviously this is open when you pack it away and it's open when you set it up. Two zips here. outside and the inside. It's really nice because we can leave the uh, um, mesh zipped. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, the insects or whatever. it's pretty good quality. It's not perfect. What couple did of, you change? A couple of little things is this. 
uh, if you are trying to open the, the mesh mm. it's a bit of a because it's in the middle of I try and put my foot there normally it's a, normally it's a two hand job yeah, right? two hands. which is a bit of a shame in the one hand but there's no way around it yeah. same with these things here well, at least it's got a skirt you can stand on, so you can do that with one hand and a foot. You should peg this, I think. Right. Peg that corner. Yeah. Oh, it's right. easier. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, yeah. you've got the same yeah. situation again. So that is a bit of a... So that's, that's just us not using it properly. No, it's not having the instructions. I'll right. show you the instructions. This is another point which is the worst part for me. Yes. And I only it's say that because it's tends are expensive, including the front piece. It's a lot of money. If you like this, if you don't have this three-section enclosure, yeah. this is the only thing holding the elements back. And here, when you close it, this piece here is so tight, you can see it. Everything's fine. And then here it's being pulled yeah. apart so i don't know how long that zip will last or the stitching around it yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it this is all this is the aluminium pole this is a seam that's been sewed in here and it's just half a centimeter too short so if it breaks what are you going to do yeah. and if it breaks it's probably your fault there's no warranty for this so just so you know how cool is this? In like night time we have a home. We have a home. We can sleep, we can work. And we see our fabulous kitchen. <laughs> That's different. All the zips have Velcro. Yeah, that is cool. There are so many ropes everywhere. This is for the fly sheet. Yeah. This is for the, the front top sides of the tent if there's a lot of wind. Yes, yeah, like what we experienced in um, <coughs> Normandy. Back here. That's also cool. This is uh, good for ventilation. It does work well. You just use the same peg. It's no, a bit long. Not net, yeah. And so far we've had a lot of weather with it. We've been in the rain, a lot of rain. And when it's dumping down, no leaks. Uh, if, if the been, fly sheet's on. If the fly sheet's on. If this isn't on, yeah. this pipe will leak. Yeah, gets nice and wet. And that is really strange. I thought it would be the same material, the top of this yeah. and the top of the tent. Yeah, I don't know if it's thinner or what it is, but it leaked. What I also don't understand how it works is this section here, all this black stuff. What happens with it? Well, that stuff sort of drains the water away, right? Do you need to peg it all down? That is the idea, if it's going to be raining a lot. front piece can come out, it's got a hole in it for mm. if you have extra spare tent poles you mm. can put this up and keep the fly mm. as your insect barrier which is cool. You can also roll this up and some lashes here which you can tie it up with mm. which is another option but this gives you an extra shape. Um, yeah, this part is also baffling. This is a strange piece of engineering which I still don't understand yet. This piece of canvas is part of the outer front awning. This awning in front is waterproof. We've seen that. We've been through a lot of rain. This piece here in the tent itself is not waterproof if you don't have the fly sheet on it. Yet the seam for the fly sheet is inside the tent. So how many seasons do you think we can go through before this seam starts letting go? Who knows? Through the sun, through the wind, and it starts leaking here. I thought the seam should have been outside, but I didn't design the tent, right? The other side that I'm a bit worried about are these two corner pieces. And the main thing with that is that the front, this piece of aluminium, is bent at each end 
So here it's bending inwards and there it's bending inwards. There's a bit of movement in there. So this is the plastic part. I don't know how long that's going to last. These are nitpicky little things. It's a great tent. It's well worth it, I guess. But uh, it's kind of uh, worrying when you're not sure. When we were in Normandy, we were parked on a cliff and it's probably, as you know, if you've been there, there's a lot of wind there. How windproof is an ice tent? I don't know. We were in 40 mile an hour winds, I think. I don't think this is the best tent for that. It was shaking as if someone was grabbing it, like I am now, and doing that with it. And so I was worried about the little holes from the poles. I was worried about the guy ropes, about the stitching on the edges. Eventually we just collapsed it and slept in the car. It was that bad because it makes a huge amount of racket. And another thing is the amount of canvas. Flat. When it rains you really hear it. If it's drizzling outside it sounds like a monsoon inside which is really weird. Most dome tents don't have that. They're designed like that for the wind and the rain. This is designed for something totally different. I don't know what that is exactly. Australian scent. Australian such a we're on the outback so we'll see so far it's been three months on the road we've used this tent for about two months out of that it's getting a bit of um, patina <laughs> which is cool um, everything's well thought out I guess this is also a good idea we we'll use one of these for both sides yeah, it's clever. so that's pretty clever I guess you use the same little hook for the fly mesh. Keep that open. Uh, beyond that, it's not too hot in the blazing sun. It's obviously a tent that will keep the heat. Uh, it's dry in the rain. Yeah, actually, it's not a bad tent all in all. Just a couple of niggly things where I'm wondering where did they cut a corner. But having said that, this is an RV three light. I think the tent was originally designed, look at that, it's Bose. I think the tent was originally designed with heavy canvas in mind. This is very light, tur polyester kind of material, which is kind of waxy. So yeah, there it is, man. Most of it's great. It's a nice big area. It's not too hard to set up, not much of a fat. You do need two people at certain stages, which is, uh, Part of it you just got to deal with that so yeah let me know what you think down below what i don't know how you guys go camping next door as luck would have it we have a, a modern land cruiser i think it's a 100 or it might be a pajero <laughs> roof tent the whole roof tent section which is about as big as this it's also pretty cool we've gone with this for the space we need to go and sit down at a chair and a table which you can't do in a roof tent and do some work so yeah man, let me know down below, your comments down below and I'll see you next time and keep rolling guys.